Hello and salutations, my friends, and welcome back to Darkest Hour. At this point, you probably know, you know, this is Darkest Hour for Heart to Find. I'm your host, Mr. Um, well, I'm not Mr. Barton Mor Mor Borman Lover. I don't really love this guy very much. He doesn't have a description here, but... Yeah. Here we are. February 3rd, 1943. That's how far we've got into the good old USSR with Stalingrad as a capital, surrounded by forces, and honestly, we can't take them out yet because our soldiers have little to no supply. Ooh, there's another encyclopedia right here, too. But before we talk about our focuses... Casualties. We suffered three quarters of a million casualties. Not even a million yet. We've destroyed almost the entire Soviet army, de dealing 3.2 million casualties, and then Hungary's destroyed a few, a little bit. Um, UK is still here. Dutchie Cindy's not doing so well. Mm, I'm not sure what the sound was where my mouth was, but uh, I guess America's not in the war. They're fighting the Japanese, though. Who are you? Henry A. Wallace. I don't remember you from history, but... Land of the Free, Soak the Rich, Third New Deal, the Third New Deal, wait, we have two th new Third Deals, they both give you 25% political power, but money income modifier, negative 21%, negative 32%, that's a lot of negativity, the Bureau of Ships, the General HQ Air Force, Vincent Trammell Act, well that seems kind of, kind of lacking for America in 1943, that seems a little lacking, but no matter what, we'll take them out hopefully eventually. Uh, but right now, we are currently doing what focus? Ah, you Kreuzer. Up to now. Uh, our U-boats were forced to stay close to the ports, and their effectiveness in attacking enemy combos was thus decreased. That's why we'll bring a submarine type from the veld, creating back to life, the u -Kreuzer. Such a U-boat, but much bigger, with heavier guns and even bigger range. With the u -Kreuzer, we can attack treating fleets as far away as the Mid-Atlantic and cut off. Our enemy supply lines were the weakest. The new cruisers will be the height of the German engineering, shipping engineering. And they are powerful addition to our already mighty subfleet. Also, I did do this one because we had enough of it. Refit the Sturzkampfgeschwader. Our enemy's tanks are proving to be more of a challenge than we initially thought, and are becoming quite a nuisance to our advance. That's why the Henschel designed the H Henschel 129 for the Luftwaffe. This cast warplane is specifically equipped for fighting tanks, thus being nicknamed the Panzernaka. Instead of continuing to throw our tanks to theirs, we can choose instead to destroy them from the air, once again getting an edge of our enemies will see coming. That one's okay to do. I'll do this one, though. Deutschland, Beherrscher der Meer. The Kaiser Lecher Marine was once of the fiercest navies in the world. The German high seas fleet, a powerhouse, and the U-boats a menace to any foe who dared tread near Deutschland's cavern. Oh. General Secretary Salon suffered a stroke, but so it remains like that. However, the Great One's line has been defanged. The battle fleet is gone, with only a small handful of escort ships and breach dreadnought hooks left. Our subs are gone. But no more, Deutschland's naval powerhouse shall be reignited, and the great dockets of Bremen and Kiel shall be flushed with workers, all helping to recruit our past glory. New ships, new U-boats, and new weapon systems shall be created to secure the German fleet of the modern wonder of the ocean. The old ships refitted, the modern officers promoted, the new ships forged in the iron and blood of Germany. After a great Teutonic navy is constructed, nothing shall stop us from reclaiming our position as one of the premier world navies. Deutschland be beherrscher der Meer. Man, I started re-recording at a great time. Holy crap. Also, our pa t Panzer Corps is... Panzer Army, Panzer Corps, it's much less than what we started with or had in the last episode. Like, oh my god, it's so much worse. I had to consolidate units. Supply is so bad. We are running out of fuel. I also, we conquered Baku. I raced for Baku, but there's no fuel down here. Like, what the heck? There's literally no fuel down here. What the heck? There's 10 in, like, this Georgia-ish region. I don't know what this is. English Republic region? But, uh, but uh, where's the fuel? Where's the fuel? In Baku. Like, bruh, where's the fuel? And they have a little bit of chromium and a little bit of oil back there, but... Bruh. Like, what's the point of racing for Baku if you don't get no fuel? There's fuel up there. None. Like, seriously. That seems like a major oversight to me, but maybe I'm wrong. But let's talk about this uh, this Joseph guy. How do we have little to no appearance of the leader of the Soviet Union? Grim news has been announced by Vyacheslav Molotov and several Soviet doctors, with a small crowd of reporters and officials. The now general secretary confirmed to be the public by uh, to the Republic by the radio that Joseph Stalin had been pronounced dead early that morning. Although little info has been presented on when and why, Molotov explained a fiddle stroke claimed the life of the man of steel. The death of our dear comrade is tricking me to my very core, and I'm sure has done the same to all Russian people. Because of this, four days of national mourning have been declared, and a state funeral will take place shortly. Molotov stated, continue to work into defend a great state, strive to overcome this and press onwards, but always remember him. Due to the advancing German forces, a loss of many major cities, and now a departed leader, as unclear if Molotov will try to make peace with the Germans or continue the fight against the war machine. Either way, the Soviet Union lost someone who was thought to be invincible today, and it's even more unclear about how Stalin's death will affect the nation for years to come. Too bad we didn't get to kill him ourselves. Oh, look at this guy. Zidanov. Zidanov. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, we had to deal with all... Oh. 
Oh, command structure paralyzed. Soviet work discipline. Deficient economy. Women in the workforce. Closed agriculture model. The flight for the north, huh? <coughs> the major unexpected event occurred at the Berlin's Tempelhof airport today. Uh, as two heavily co coded and heavily accented German gentlemen walked off a Junker 52, announcing to airport guards that they were ha here on behalf of Acting General Secretary Molotov. Uh, the brief, a uh, uh, brisk debriefing and confirmation of documents, the reason for being here became surprisingly apparent. While we've been expecting the visit, the meeting was certainly not what had been discussed. Molotov had sent a pair of Swedish, not Russian, diplomats to discuss an unconditional or conditional surrender on behalf of the Soviet Union. Our diplomats were ushered to the airport at haste. The conference wrapped up in less than an hour, and the two options uh, emerged triumphantly. With most major Soviet cities captured under occupation, it seems pointless to continue further push into the Urals region of Russia. An unconditional withdrawal past the line would be simple to demand. However, if want more spoils from the Bolsheviks, we could continue our advances and refuse negotiations. What would you tell them? The Soviets will most certainly accept. The entire structure of communism is in total collapse brought upon our boot heel. And the negotiations now, German shall march onwards. Continue advance to the Urals. Send them to Stockholm hands in hand. Um, I kind of want to go with this one. I have, a f I have a very strong feeling I'm going to play Germany again sometime in Darkest Hour because this mod has so much potential, it's not funny. Um, I really want to stall and grab, but we just, like, we're struggling to try to take it. And we've lost not even a million, but still. So in the future, I'll probably push to the Urals. I do want the AA line because that's where we wanted, and that'll give us time to focus more on the Middle East, more on Africa, because, you know, Africa's actually looking, not looking as bad as it could, and focus really on the United Kingdom, so... Send the diplomats to Stockholm. Demands in hand. We've only killed off three and a third million. Victory in the East. We've done it. Victory's achieved. The Jewish Bolshevik threat is soon to be destroyed. As the Soviet government has agreed to total secession of hostilities. Also, look at how our war plan is going up and around through Finland, Sweden, to here. Uh, through blood and iron, the concept of Leibniz drama is no longer a fool's errand, but a reality. The German people can now rest easy and know that the destruction of Europe will never come, as their empire stretches to both ends of Europe and the Bolsheviks' resources and factories are more than enough to support our struggle. So with that I say, we have suffered enough. We have been pers persecuted enough, and it's finally time for New Germany, a greater Germany to rule over what she so rightfully deserves, to a thousand year Reich. Why piece of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics? Warning. More likely to cause the game to lag and freeze. The time it takes is random. Please be patient when choosing this option. Also, before we do that, I'll rock I'm go morning. Uh, we also have plunder conquer territories. The war effort's putting quite a strain on the resources on the country. So, we gotta do what, like, basically plunder. Um, we would have got this. Uh, whatever it may be, we'll uh, be able to continue with the war without any fear that we have to limit our resources. Allowing us the freedom to pursue whatever objectives we so desire and get the strength we need to bring this war to close. Plunder Minsk. Honestly, we don't have to do that. We still make money. We're making $11. We get more resistance, but honestly, we don't even have to do that. War operations fall Grun, which is weird. If you want to read about this, uh, about us taking out Czechoslovakia, because they came back from the dead somehow, so I'm not sure why they're here. An offensive war against the Czechoslovak uh, Republic. Uh, Felix, of course. Uh, Ikoros, Eda, the Eastern Great Crusade. Ooh, the strains of war. With every million of our men murdered, our technical advances, advantages will be declining severely. We haven't even lost 800,000 men yet. We don't even have 1,000 guns in a stockpile. Uh, we haven't had to do any of this stuff. Not even that one. Silva Fuchs, like we saw last time. We're launching a bombing campaign, and we have Plan Z here, so we have more than enough heavy cruisers. Oh, do we actually have enough? Well, I guess. Light cruisers, heavy cruisers? Well, we're already a quarter of the way through that. Let's just make one. Oh, this is outdated too. Battleship 33. Well, it's still outdated. Oh, heavy subs. Heavy sub 33. Oh, no. Um. Electro boot. 28 torpedo attack. 44. Max range is 15,000 with a speed of 22. Uh, 15,000, 20. Why would we choose this one? Alright, well, it's going to lag quite a bit, but yeah. Um, I know the mod is still under work and still going to get developed. You know, I've got no problem with that. So, initially, like, we, like in the last episode, we saw like 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 planes at one time in the battle. I, like, I don't know my military history that well. Seems a bit excessive for the Soviet Union to have that much in 41. It was an early, slightly early 41 as well when we invaded them, so... I'm not entirely sure what was up with that, but, uh... It is what it is, I guess. Um, but we'll see how long this takes to, uh, get done with this peace conference. Well, I guess it didn't take that long to actually get rid of them. And this is actually looking pretty nice. Look at this. Oh my god, that's so nice. Um, the war... Uh, end of the war in the East. 
Wax Commissar at Assen, the Baltics and Belarus have come under heavy military jurisdiction, prompting the question of what should be done with the region. Some argue for Wax Commissar at Assen to keep the population in check so that the transition is smooth and economically vital sectors are not hindered in their daily operations. And then we'll do Wax Commissar at Ukraine. Uh, military success in the south needs to be consolidated. Whereas advocated direct military occupation, some advisors said a German controlled civil administration in Ukraine to better quell any possible unrest while still benefiting from the new raw materials and industries. We can't do Muscovine. Oh, now we can. The core lands of the Soviet Union are now under control, with its mostly rough and ethnic makeup, it could spell years of social unrest. Proposals put forward that partition of Russia would not only prevent the revival of a Russian state, it would also increase the efficiency of the administration in the newly conquered lands. And the next comes right, Caucasine. Uh, it's gonna take a while for Muscovine to get formed. Muscovine always takes forever to like blow up and create. <clears throat> and I guess we have Oldenstadt, SS Oldenstadt, Gothenland as well. Once Muscovine doesn't crash the game any harder. Uh, made up of the many nations and ethnicities, the volatile region of the Caucasus may be brought to a long lasting peace for this end. The new Rocks Commissar at Caucasus a plan to grant every people its own from a limited autonomy, under Berlin's supervision, of course, as long as their military and industry retain access to the rich oil fields in the south. And the Gothenland, which shouldn't take too long to. Is there oil here? We build the oil fields, huh? Baku oil fields. Oh, it's, whoa. Currently operational. Why is there no oil here? Uh, beautiful. Get that freaking oil going, boy. Also, we're going to go over the Turks next. Also, who are we war with? Um, really? If it's still just capitulate the UK, that's all we need. But I was going to go to war with the uh, Turks next. Two, three, four. Um, I'm about to launch a massive invasion over here. Uh, 1500. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Like, the most planes. I, I, I said in the earlier episode, like, I think it was the last episode. I'm literally just waiting until we have enough planes so we can do this. Uh, bombers, uh, that one, anti air. Uh, ports, too, would probably be pretty good. And 900 is not enough. Uh, is there anything else that's open? Eh, let's go over here. Oh, we have quite a few naval bombers too, don't we? Attack craft is quite a few. Torpedo bombers. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Crap ton of naval bombers. We have no fuel for this. But we'll get them ready. Nice and ready, my friends. Grun? I'll get there eventually. Um, yeah, I don't really want to plunder anybody. I'll be honest, I really don't. I want to be a nice guy. Bros, I got rid of communism. You like me now? You're still fighting over this dirt patch. At least, at least he didn't fall and fail here. Oh my god, what is wrong with you guys? Barnacles. What the barnacles is wrong with y'all? I know supplies going to be god awful around here. We've been embargoed by the Soviet Union. I mean, truth be told, I don't think anyone gives a crap, uh, Molotov. I want to see what happens to these guys. How did this? There's no way they have this much stability and war support after what just happened. There's no flipping way. Absolutely no way, man. Oh, so let's take a look-see. Caucasus. Ah! Shik Shikidans. I love civil repression. Herbert Baka. Rex comes out Ukraine. A uh, cock. Klaus Selznow, Oslin, led by this Loza guy, and Alfred Rosenberg. Sounds kind of Jewish to me. And Siegfried Kasch, and Wilhelm Adam. Oh, we own this too. Man, we did not even get Finland into the war. Bruh. Combos are doing great, though. Level 6 only still? Hmm, could be better. We're gonna get that sweat, man. But we gotta wait. Can y'all, like, Hurry the heck up. She, we did the sheikdom of Kuwait, really? Alright, whatever. Well, I'll let you guys go in. Activate Untenem and Gertrude. Nice. Mm. Oh, Operation Gertrude is a Wehrmacht's current plan for the invasion of the Tur Turkey. 
Okay, they redrafted Operation Gertrude in response to recent diplomatic developments, which have made the continued independence of Turkey unacceptable. Our force will cross the Bulgarian border and seize European Turkey, will divide it in two. Group North will move to assault Istanbul from the west, while Group South will dash across the Dardanelles and move north into the Katalka Peninsula. With will attack the ancient city from the east. With Istanbul under our control, our soldiers will be in position for a swift and decisive strike deep into the Turkish heartland, culminating in the capture of the enemy capital of Ankara. The OKW has several concerns about the viability of Unternehmen and Giltrude. Some journalists balk at the prospect of a prolonged campaign in the Turkish highlands, while consider the crossing of the Dardanelles an acceptable risk. However, they should the fear of decide to pursue Giltrude. They should execute to the best of their abilities. I'm not attacking. These guys are, like, they're tired. They are so tired. Do you guys have... Okay, you go part of the army. Two... Three, four. Could you guys win here? Did we try? Can hit south? Get to the Dardanelles, maybe? Sport gun would be nice. You. You can come over here as well. Force your way through as best you possibly can. Supply really sucks around here. Guess these Indies are gone. Well. You just kind of go in. Got it simple. Sure, we'll do fall Grun. Screw it, why not? Eastern Great Crusade. Well, that's, that's gone too. Nice. Expand more ties, I suppose. Also, we've made uh, Bulgaria a puppet of ours now, finally, so. Romania, that wants to kill us. Hopefully, you could gain Cora. Ah, Slovak. Slovenia. Slovenia, yes. So good. Um, anything over here we really care about? No? Okay. Ah, good. Oh, need more divisions on the side, too. Um, Schwer Panzer Entwicklung? Entwicklung. Our forces are currently at a stalemate, forced to defend the front lines instead of adopting a Blitzkrieg doctrine of battle. What's worse is that the enemy is currently winning, able to create powerful breakthroughs that are pushing us back to our native borders. Such defeats in the battlefield are no longer tolerated, and we must adapt accordingly. The introduction of Schwer Panzer, or heavy tanks, can solve a variety of issues in the battlefield, such as providing breakthroughs for offensive operations to providing fire support and countering enemy advances. Such units are slow and less mobile, however, they so they should be used efficiently to achieve maximum results. Y'all are not advancing over here fast enough. I need you guys to stop the assault. Hold and not get and circle. God dang it. Bro, you're going literally the wrong way. Oh my god. I'm about to... They destroyed it. Oh my god. Are you freaking kidding me? They got and circle destroyed. Are you freaking kidding me, bro? Jesus Christ. Yeah, these tanks are not worth it. They're not very good. Uh, my bad. You didn't just see that. <laughs> Screw it, they're gonna suck hard. We're switching these up. Medium tanks. Cavalry. Panzer. I'm um, switching so to light. Uh, Schwerer Panzer. Schwerer Panzer. Armored cars, heavy panzers, armored cars, the light tanks for this one. That was so bad. Um, bro, we just lost a tank division. Get the heck out of here. The infantry is pathetically slow. I don't care how weak or damaged you are, you're going in. And you're gonna freaking like it. That was so bad. Um, hey, another light cruiser? Ah, uh, 1940s have light cruiser. Good. The uh, Stande Panzer Program. 140 days, holy crap. While we're certainly capable of producing good and powerful tanks, recently shown by the success of the Tagum Panther, we so far always struggle with low production rates, caused by the rather complex building process and over-engineering often found in our tanks. While the drawbacks so far have been acceptable, recent experiences and intelligence reports show that we can't continue like this and we will remain all competitive with the tank forces of our enemies. The fear is thus sad in order the development and subsequent production of a whole new series of tanks dubbed the E-Series by our neighbors, or engineers, which should replace the majority of German tank models in the near future with E-Tanks, ranging from small tank destroyers E-10s to the massive E-100s. All of these tanks will be designed with a special focus on the simplification of production and maintenance while also in in cooperating with our frontline experiences and the need of our troops, creating a truly modern masterpiece of German engineering. Did I forget to use it? Yes, I did. God dang it. Japan has done very well for themselves, too. Bros, just frickin' goes. Got a 
time, little ahead of time. Nuclear stuff. Interceptors, those are nice. Practical turbo jet engines, yes. Oh, let's go this one. Look at this encirclement. Our guys are so pathetic, they can't even kill these guys off. Why can't we build here? What the? Bro! Why can't we build in the the right so That's a, a huge oversight. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Ugh. Are you, like, flipping kidding me right now? Bro. What is wrong with this? We got no extra stability from taking out the Soviet Union. Bruh. Um, disperse military factories? Flak tone? That seems a more historical option. I'm gonna do this one maybe. Our military industrial cap capabilities are rapidly expanding, both through conquest and construction. As the war has gone on, our military industry has become a prime target for enemies, and we're trying to bomb an attempt to disrupt and slow down our war machine. We'll let them succeed as we will begin to spread out the factors across the territory, which will limit the amount of damage we can do in one bombing run and prevent them from disrupting our production capabilities too much, which will benefit our soldiers on the front lines more than anything. Beautiful. 19 convoys, my god. Once in a good shoot is success. Uh, Operation Overview of the Invasion and Occupation of Turkey, King Odem, Untername, and Gertrude has finally come, been fought to a successful conclusion after lasting throughout the Anatolian region. Or Peninsula. The Swaskin flies proudly over Old Istanbul and the Hagia Sophia is patrolled by German boots. Notable events. When planning the operation, staff had concerns regarding the elevated and barren landscapes of Anatolia, which would almost surely give way to harsh attrition. These concerns proved well in order the, over the cause of the campaign, as organized Turkish resistance caused immense German casualties. Nonetheless, continued armor drives from cars and cars, supported by huge attachments of Gebergs Jägers, eventually whittled down Turkish formations to the point of mass desertion, surrendered devolution into all organized partisan resistance. A joint Bulgarian German assault on Istanbul reached the hollowed city's outskirts, through, though under concerns of devastating urban combat, the ancient metropolis was placed under continued embarment and blockade until the surrender. 3. Uh, the capitulation of Turkey preci precipitates further access operations in the Middle East, while also securing dominance over the Black Sea and granting more access to our port facilities in the me Eastern Med. Med. Control of the diverse and conflicted nation will be difficult, though could be achieved with a combination of collaboration and efficient brutality. The Vosperus is a new master. Oh, are they going to capitulate or what? <laughs> Alright, we're heading down into Iraq as well, which is good. Uh, can we deploy some of you? We need to mobilize a little more, a few more guys. Which I don't think is going to be a real big old problem for us. Because we're still on one year mandatory service. Two year mandatory service? Watch out now. We're going radical. The whole 4%? Oh my god. Um, control of the Danube. Sure, why not? Make them love us a little bit more, why not? Get us Ada. Hmm. We'll get there. I mean, we'll definitely get there, but still. Move faster if you can. So lend lease, interceptors, engineering. We're a little bit behind. We're definitely behind them. Oh my god. Decryption. Nice. I circled there. Oh my god, Turkey. We lost so many guys. Turkey killed off 200,000. That's such freaking BS. They lost a lot against the Empire of Japan. That's really nice, actually. Turkey, thank God they enjoyed a faction. They killed off more soldiers than we killed off of them. Oh, we're going to butcher every last Turk here. That's not even funny. Actually, help. They... I know Turkey's not a big old thing that the death are really concerned about, but, like, what the heck? Why have they not capitulated? This makes literally no sense. Any more anti-aircraft guns, huh? The United States are gone. Pretty strong Japan. Nuclear reactors. Now it's nuclear bombs. V2 rockets. Not quite there yet. Heavies. Oh, I didn't want that one. I'm gonna go here and get a little risky. Oh boy, now it really lit up. Oh my god. 
Jesus. Turk VPs definitely need to be reworked. Not French state, no more, huh? It's fine. We're full up. Except from Croatia. Isomerization. This is forty five. Nice. Got session four. Where the heck is the capital? Izmir, really? Where are you going? Why did you leave? How stupid are you? War of the Iraq here. Bruh, if you want supply, go get supply. What the heck? Computing machine support. Oh, another research slot. I didn't realize that. It's very nice. Come on. This is taking way too long for Turkey. This is really stupid in all honesty. Economic policy, maybe. I'll get Baka oil at full capacity. Ciao. Yeah. That was so stupid. Yeah, well, guess what? We're gonna direct annexation. No one's getting extra turkey. I'm eating all the turkey. Who also wants turkey? I definitely want Istanbul. Um. Yeah, no. We're taking that, you piece of garbage. You deserve nothing from this. You don't deserve a single thing. Yeah, no. Thank God those guys died. Um, I don't really want some of my tanks down here because they're very weak and whatnot. But I think I'll leave 25 divisions down here too to help take these guys out. The rest of the army can come up here because we will need to invade next into uh, here. Do we have? I combined a lot of divisions over here too. You guys are still over there, just kind of hanging out, having a good old time. You actually can launch from Cherbourg into here, but we have got to wait. Until our other guys show up. Ah, uh, yes. The invasion of the UK has actually gone ahead okay. Um, naval vision support, overall not bad. Uh, where are we at right now? So, there, we're at 61%. It is December 31st, 1943. Happy, it's almost Happy New Year. I see we're doing quite well, actually. Hmm. London will fall soon. What is this like right now? UK, where are you? They have 67 divisions. They, they must, I would assume. Well... Japan's done extremely well, like I said earlier. Uh, Communist International. This is weird. Why do they have... Mm. I guess we're still down here, too. That's not good. Oh, my God. What a mess. What a freaking mess. Get to them ports, boys. Get to them goddamn ports. And to supply centers, anyways. Uh, von Witzleben. Uh, supplies. Just not really connected very well at all. Let's see. I'm not even sure what the heck is even connected around here. So let's just say we're going to go from here to there, and from there to there. No, we have no supply. But the invasion, I don't think it's going to be any sort of issues from here on out. London will fall, we'll get the radar base, we'll do well, and it has fallen. Very nice. Get the Bristol, yes. Ah, and part, uh, the Emirate of uh, Transjordan is gone, which is very nice, very nice. Spread out, y'all. Spread out. Get to Gaza or something. Oh, there are our Italian allies. Oh the, Brit oh, the Brits are over here too, and they're. I guess there are a lot of divisions around here as well. Huh. 
Well, that was a big old mistake by them. Not preparing the home islands just in case. We went and took out the entire Soviet Union and then came back for the British. These guys really weren't ready, were they? For working conditions? Yeah, we can do that. Why not? The factions. Yeah. War propaganda against Empire Japan? Sure, why not? Looks like a human gold ring. Uh, we can plunder different areas, but we don't really need to do that. I don't want to piss too many people off. Getting the Baku oil fields at full capacity. Uh, war measures, identification of parallel attacks, deploy reserve armories. We're kind of okay. Spending ties? Sure, why not? We'll be nice and generous to them as we have a cup of peach tea here. And we have some uh, comments to go through as well. Oh. Oh. Wait, what? Wait, what? Hey, look at that. We sunk a carrier, battleship, and a heavy cruiser. Two battleships, actually. Nice. The allies. Uh. Why? Um, okay. Sure, why not? Weekly manpower, sure. A little more population. Superior soil surveys. That's kind of cool. Back to plus 10% is not bad, but refineries and whatnot is not bad too. So why did they capitulate? Like that. I don't understand. Oh, so comments included. Same reason why I quit my campaign, um, says somebody. Mm, so says, my only problem with this mod is that fact Canada pieces out after you take the UK, but then you're stuck in an endless war over the overseas possessions. So it says, the production for the USSR seems very historical, actually. It's one of the biggest, biggest reasons why they ended up winning. <clears throat> Someone says, uh, I should either do a run with positive Christianity, keeping Hess, Hess safe, which I think Hess just died automatically. Um, you can follow the Reichsbank. Cool, but force them to give in to the Man of Destiny. Cool. Um, someone says, I should do a KMT China run in the Cold War mod. You get a totally different focus for you. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I can't really, can't really save Hess, like I said earlier. Um, there's no way to take out the UK on this mod is absurd, says somebody. So, I mean, as you saw, we just did that. It wasn't really that bad. You just have to wait to get enough planes. And once we beat the Soviet Union, that's pretty much over. Uh, someone says, don't forget about Daybreaker's Path and Equestria War mod. Um, let's see... So it says, I would like you to follow the focuses before justifying, but oh well. Someone says, Romania could have been an ally. That's very true. Uh, so it says, she has shame that this mod doesn't have any content for alternate history paths, which it'll come eventually. Um, but yeah. An additional person said, I'm enjoying it a lot, man, this, the campaign, but in my opinion, you should focus on the Mediterranean before going to the USSR. See the mod is scripted mechanics before invading a country. So yeah, that's technically true, too. And play in TNO as progressive MCS. So. Um, I definitely want them. And Denmark. Now, I mean, we wouldn't be Germans if we didn't take Poland, right? Well, I don't know how far in the Middle East I really want to go. Oh, I can't even get over there. God dang it. Well, you know what? I've already started building stuff here, so I'm going to continue building stuff here. It's all that. They can have that, I guess. Why does Canada get that? That just doesn't make any sense, man. Like, like I said, really. it doesn't make any sense. Free France. Let's go just take that. Uh, we're not going to get that one or that one. Union of South Africa. I don't really care about Union of South Africa, to be honest with you. Czechoslovakia. We got uh, Romania. I'm also take Romania. A lot of uh, Asian states. Ah. Egypt, Bahrain, crucial states. Well, that's going to be the ugliest thing you've ever seen. Um, how else do we want to expand? Egypt? Well, I can divide Egypt into two. Screw it. I'll take all of it there. They can have that. And... You know... I like how there's a lot of victory points around all, for all this stuff, but we really need it all. Just fuck the public. Fuck India. I guess.
Sucked all. Got you some MDs. We can't select all there. I do want to get the ships as well. <coughs> Excuse me. Do we actually choose part of this? Oh, we can make it so well. Oh my god, if we took this. Oh my god. That'd be so bad for the Japanese. You know, what if we took Australia? Just very little snips and portions. Why not? Screw it. It's going to make it look god awfully ugly. But that's okay, right? Exactly. That's what I thought. I hope no one wants New Zealand as well. Mm, Nepal. Yeah, I don't care about those states. Sure, why not? India. Yeah, we don't want India. Australia. Select all? Can we do that? No, no, we can't do that, darn it. There you go. That'd be funny, though. Ball just taking so long with this. Just taking whatever we, we literally can. At this point, no. Oh, darn it. That sucks. Um, where are we at? There we go. Can we claim that? Darn, we can't. Darn it. Okay. That's fine. Um, ship wise, is there anything really here? I mean, the Australian ships might be okay, but I don't know if we can get anything actually. Select all screening ships. No, 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 no. Yeah. Cool. Cancel lend lease. Own to name and ID as a success of an operational under the views. After a long struggle through the Western Desert, culminating in fierce battle on El Almim. The Africa Corps, the Italian resistance, have probably broken through. Capturing Cairo, the Nile Delta, and advancing to the Suez Canal, Unterneim and Eid has been brought to a very victorious end. Events. Despite logistical constraints in North Africa, German forces conducting Operation Sonnenblum changed the tide of war in the campaign, bringing the British to Al Almim, where ferocious to combat uh, nearly brought the advance to an end. However, the size of Italian action under General Bastico uh, stalled the British long enough for Panzer forces to break through. The actions of El Almin routed the British army and sent them in a fighting retreat through the Asia proper. After the capture of port facilities at Alexandria, the Axis forces drove on to Cairo, with jubilant Italian and German troops holding victory celebrations at the ancient pyramids of the Giza. The effective fall of Egypt in large parts ends the North African campaign, paves the way for more Axis forces moving on to the Levant, and more importantly, the Suez, which could cut Allied shipping into the Indian Ocean. For what's worth, though, this serves as the major Axis victory. The Jiggle of the British Empire's Cup. Here's this one. Remember this? Please go ahead. Go to the Reich. Reich's Partei des Friedens. Yes. Um. With the nearly uh, a million Germans gathered in Nuremberg to celebrate the successful campaign to once more make Germany a whole country, with the addition of Danzig and thus the Easter flank secured, Hitler found his speech around focused his speech around the soon never be lasting peace, but there was a little hit. They need to do something first. Peace in time, right? Nice. Dusk over England. Oh, are we at peace now? The king in exile, now that the cowardly French and the pitiful British <clears throat> have kneeled before the might of the German supremacy. It's time to consider peace terms. However, with the current illegitimate English government, there is no chance of starting peace talks. If we were to win this war and establish our dominions in Europe, we must first reorganize the British government, and we have just a man for the job. Edward VIII, former king of the United Kingdom, is currently appointed governor of the Bahamas after accusations of being a Nazi sympathizer. Edward and his wife sympathized with fascism in our government before, during, and during the war, touring Germany shortly after the marriage where they had a long tea and a conversation with Adolf Hitler. Edward has even asked the Wehrmacht for protection from the occupation of France, <clears throat> or during it. Therefore, we made sure to keep a close on him so that we may be able to use him once more when the time is right. <clears throat> With Operation Sea Lion being a success, there's no better time to restore the rightful ruler king of England back to the throne. Send good news to England. Or to Edward. <coughs> well, there you go. Kingdom of England is back. With Wales, of course, and the, uh, Cornwall. Lord Edward Halifax, king, form coast command. Say so she goes. Okay, interesting. Well, 
I never took out these guys either up here, which kind of was bad for us. Bad for us, but whatever. Um, recoronation of Edward VIII. Surprising news from London today, as Edward VIII was coronated as King of the United Kingdom of England and Wales. Edward VIII, who has abdicated years before to marry American star and divorcee Wallace Simpson, had arrived on the Isle only days before to reclaim the throne. Edward VIII was crowned for the first time in Westminster Abbey's regal and immaculate walls, but the scene is very different from this time. The abbey has already been severely damaged by German artillery and fire bombings, and the roof must be quickly rebuilt for the ceremony. The abbey's front is adorned with the swastika of the German Reich rather than the Union Jack. The Fuhrer Adolf Hitler was in attendance and was heavily escorted by his bodyguards. Over observers believe that the recoronation of the king is a political move by Hitler to end fighting and resistance on the British Isles, as King George VI fled to Canada and condemned the action, calling it nothing more than a puppet king with his strings clenched tight. Experts believe that the British populace who have remained on the island will rally to Edward VIII, with much popular support during a short reign as they feel abandoned by the king and his government. Only time will tell who will become the, uh, known as the true king. God save the king. That's been Ketchin program. Um, is there anything we can see? Ooh, Antinomen Silova is a success. Uh, Antinomen Silova. Uh, the invasion of Great Britain. It's finally over, of course. <clears throat> the operation involved. The largest seaborne inv invasion in history led to subsequent land combat operations throughout the Great Britain. Carried out in accordance with Fuhrer Directive at number 16, we've achieved a great victory, of course. Oh, we need more guns, don't we? <coughs> Notable events, as I stated earlier, the operation involved the assembly of the large concentration of land, uh, naval, and aerial military assets under a singular field command structure. Preceding the operation was an intense sea air base campaign to minimize the threat posed by the Royal Air Force and the Royal Navy to the invasion force and their necessary supply lines. Due to the critical nature of the campaign, the Fuhrer's headquarters were in constant contact with the OKW during the planning and execution of the operation, with the directives from the OKW being constantly changed at the Fuhrer's instance. The invasion fleet, and escorted by the bulk of the Kriegsmarine to ward off any uh, Royal Navy forays, was assisted from the air by Alva Kesselring's Luftflotte II, was five, and Hugo Sprell's Luftflotte III. Uh, despite intense fire from the coastal batteries, our troops managed to secure beachhead along these of overwhelming and concentrated air power. Our panzers were able to smash through the British lines and spread out into the interior of the Isle, using classic tactics of Bewegungskrieg. It didn't take long for London to fall, and the rest of the major population centers with it. Uh, the success of Unternehmen and Stilova has established complete German dominance over Western Europe. Copies of Sonderfandungsliste Großbritannien and the Informationsheft, Informationsheft Großbritannien have been distributed among the officers of the occupation forces, and accordingly the corresponding roundups in association with the Schutzstaffel of personnel began. I thought that they would never surrender. Thus ended the uh, Besselischen Welt. After many years, after many bloody trials, Germany is finally winning. The issue of the king has been dealt with, since near the total occupation of the British Isles have left no main government to arrive for the negotiations. Instead, the like king Edward VIII will represent Britain itself. France has already been dealt with, so now it's time to finally dictate peace. <coughs> Hitler was excited at the prospect of a German, uh, German Europe, but peace had to be made first to give the German book a breath of fresh air. But where would a, place, a good place be? Would it be a place where Germany would regain its prestige and power by crushing the British and French in revenge? Hitler knew exactly the place where the negotiations would take place, and now he had to make it clear to hide his, to, to his cabinet. To undo the humiliating peace upon us in the First World War, Hitler stated to his surrounding cabinet, we must enact revenge and redemption, while holding these said negotiations in the Hall of Mirrors in Versailles. To Hitler, the palace in which Germany was shamed and defeated shall be overshadowed by this new victory Germany would obtain. Germany shall never let itself be humiliated anymore, and the fatherland from now on will embark itself on the most powerful nation of the world. And I know just the place of Versailles. Our victory over all enemies is complete, and now it's time to dictate our terms. <coughs> Excuse me. What about the book half, huh? Well, I think we'll be okay without that. Oh, uh, do we straight up annex them, huh? I didn't come back. There you go. Ah, but never that. Slovak problem, yeah, Slovaks are always a problem. Just kidding. Where am I? I don't know. Um, the Great Eastern Crusade, strain of war. What? Um, ah, dictate terms to England as well as France. Well, France first, because they do that. Uh, light terms. Return all occupied lands except Alsace and Lothringen to France. Medium terms. Northern Pal Padeke. Order to Burgund. Well, I'm going to definitely do this again some time. We already established the rights of commissariats. <coughs> Excuse me. It's a, it's a huge drain to try to. Uh, actually, it's not that bad now. Um. Hitler will probably give you harsh terms, in honesty. Wait, what? You're not... Oh, okay, so you got all that back. What? Okay, whatever. Oh, look at this guy. Well, welcome to TNL. Take the trip to England. England may keep walls. Um, you know, I like keeping them together, but let's just see what happens. So, 
No longer of uh, Kingdom of... It's just in Kingdom of England now. But hey, Wells. Very young. So, I know we didn't get Norwell, but the Channel Islands, given them France. Could you just mean Brace? You know, they keep them... Yeah, they're gonna become a base. Savage Brittany? You know what? Get Brittany. We want to shatter France. Mordrell? The Franco Italian border. They really may have land up to their own. Have claim territory? No, no, they get all of that. Set us a Cornwall. England may keep it. Nope. Nice. Let's throw a train to TNO now. That's what they deserve. Make France a little weaker. Look at this. Ah! I love us. The issue of armament and security. Out of the question, Germany or England will be disarmed. Yeah. War operations. England will pay for its damage it has done. Moves Puppet from King of England. Wait, so you're no longer a puppet? Bruh. Embargo, but oh, okay, yeah. Finalize new Versailles Treaty, Triumph of Will. <coughs> Excuse me, today, the council leaders from all over the Europe have descended on Versailles, the French town where the German Empire was established, and where the same name or nation was dismounted after the defeat in the First World War. The problem was that the United Kingdom did not formally surrender, so the remaining members of the government fled to Canada and established a provisional government under exiled King George VI. As a result, the German right decided to establish an access aligned regime in England with Lord Halifax as the new Prime Minister and Edward VIII as the proclaimed king. Germany's now dictated in terms of the defeat of powers and delegate from all over Europe having signed the Third Treaty of Versailles. As a result, the United States of America refused to recognize a newly established British and continues to support the exiled government of Canada as the rightful owner of the United Kingdom. It's not known what the German Reich's next actions will be, but this marks the end of an era and the beginning of a new era in which Germany will be the main actor. The dawn of a new era. Ah, that's good. We'll get enough of the power over that, too. So, we're peace. And I know I should have taken out, you know, the Scandinavian countries. And we will, or we would. Um, not bad. Look at all that. The rest of Germany is right all the way through here. If Italian East Africa, a French state was with us as well now, so we got all of South Africa, so the Allies have to go through all this, which sucks for them. I don't understand why we would stop here. Like this makes literally no sense. Why would how would Canada keep this? That literally makes no sense. If anything, we would claim it all because they can't they can't defend it. So why wouldn't we take it? You know? Um Yeah, America's not a hundred percent there, as it's forty four, and they never uh, did anything, and I did play them once uh, in this mod before as well, uh, before the 1.0 came out. But it, it was a little glitch, glitchrinoed. S bit, uh, five bit, not S bit. Sure, why not? I've been Shalom. Who's this? Alpine Fortress. Oh, sure. Screw it. Oh, why not? So, there's anything after that? Total. We didn't get to Total Krieg. Well, if you wonder about that, please go ahead. We did really well, though. Invest in Wunderwaffen. The genius organizer sounds like fun. I love using foreign labor. Streamline production, of course. And underground factories. Um, but yeah, overall, not bad. I thoroughly enjoyed this. You know, I'd re basically redo all of it again. The final struggle. Oh, I guess we could do this as well. Throw the Oswald to defend ourselves. Uh, Atlantic Wall. I, uh, the final struggle. I really don't want to invade America. The beginning to the end for the Judeo-Capitalistic world. Um, I just don't really want to do it now. Because I want to see, like, as this game, or this mod, gets more and more updated, I want to see, like, where it can go. And I really don't want to beat America right now. I'll be honest. <laughs> I really don't. I wouldn't even do any of this out. The Waffen SS or anything like that. Uh, so there's that. Uh, the SS Freiwilligen Divisions, which is more the historical one. You know, I would recommend, if the devs are watching, um, put on the, like, oh, this is a historical route. This is a historical route, at least for some of these. So I like this one, too. Strict force, uh, enforce strict purity requirements. Division in the SS, of course. Panzer troop in SS. SS Special Kräfte. And a group from the Wehrmacht, so. Cool. Other than that, I, th yeah, I just don't want to invade America, because our Navy's not very good. I mean, we could, we could, we could do well against them. They're not even, they weren't even really in the war either, so. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I, I don't know why we would stop at Scotland. How many divisions? They have up to 40, so that's not bad. Uh, the Navy, actually, that's not, that's not very good either. But that requires to go back to War with Canada. I don't really want to do that now. I don't understand, I just don't understand why we would stop up here. It makes no sense. If we can invade the U UK successfully down here, why can we not invade up there? So, but maybe that's just me. As I'm kind of surprised, usually in a lot of mods that, oh, I guess Mal Solon's gone, Maltov is here with Sedanov, that uh, the USSR would collapse and stuff like that, so. Oh well, I guess. So, I think I'm going to end the campaign here. If you enjoy the campaign, leave a like. 
Subscribe if you're new. We're in the new world. Uh, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow in another campaign. Thanks for watching. Have a fantastic, great rest of your day.